What's happening, guys? Thank you for tuning in to Rules for Rebels. Uh, was chatting with a dude online the other day. This video could go a couple different directions after starting off like that, right? But no, seriously, was uh, just chatting with a guy online who was thinking about two different businesses he was thinking about starting. And one was power washing, and the other was an Amazon FBA business. So uh, we were chatting a little bit through private message and an email, um, and I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about this because I see these both of these businesses as things that a lot of people are interested in, wanting to go into, and also like how do you decide which business is kind of more conducive to to your situation. So he says, I realize that this question probably gets asked a lot. I currently have 5K to invest in a business. I currently work in a bank job where I make roughly 70 to $75,000 per year. However, even though I'm making decent money, I wanna make a lot more. Both pressure washing and Amazon FBA catch my eye, but I have no experience in either. If you guys had 5K to spare and invest in a business, which of the two would you take? I am not thinking of leaving my job immediately, and neither of these two options would start off. And either of these two options would start off as a side hustle. Any thoughts? Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, two very different businesses, but two great businesses. Two businesses that definitely have the potential to be profitable. Um, but which, which direction should he go? Which one should he choose? So one of the first things I wanted to start off saying is uh, I noticed in the entrepreneur communities and especially like on the entrepreneur Reddit sub forum, there's a handful of businesses that everybody's kind of knee jerk reaction is, is to move to. And I think it's because people see a lot of other people talking about these businesses. So, um, <laughs> you know, a couple of these would be power washing, window washing, Amazon FBA, AliExpress drop shipping and Shopify, right? It's just like those things are things that like a lot of people are doing and a lot of people are rushing into and, and especially with something like power washing. I mean, it, it's not as if there's too much competition. Like these people are all over the place. There's probably not overly stiff competition in, in your area. But nonetheless, I just don't want people to feel like there's only like five options out there and you have to do one of these things. Uh, when we do these episodes of Side Hustle Tuesday, which I'll actually be airing later on this evening, um, you know, you hear about all different stories. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about a lady who used to uh, live in a rural area and have like a dog sled team. Um, and I think do like little hikes and expeditions and outdoor stuff with people. She started her own, I guess you could call it kind of lifestyle coaching for like, older women who still want to live an active life and it's kind of like health mentality fitness like all that type of stuff but there's so many different ways you can make money don't don't handcuff yourself by thinking you have to do like one of the five things that everybody else is doing right now so that, that's one of the first things i wanted to say another thing i wanted to touch on i see a lot of people and this gentleman didn't do that but i see a lot of people throw out the question of like hey, I have $10,000 to invest, what type of business should I start? And that's really like not even a starting point for trying to help somebody find a business because simply having $10,000 doesn't really tell us anything and it doesn't really mean anything. Um, I know we've all heard the phrase, it takes money to make money, right? And while there is some truth to that, uh, there is also truth to the fact that simply having money does not mean that that money is just automatically gonna grow because you have it. If everybody who had $10,000 could just put that money to work and turn it into $100,000, everybody would be rich and nobody would be working. So, um, you know, saying I have $5,000 or I have $10,000 to invest doesn't really really mean anything. I think what's more important or a better question to ask would be like, what are you good at? What are some of your skill sets? What are your interests? It, whether you have money to invest in a business or not, like if you have a background in graphic design, I might say, okay, you might wanna try selling t-shirts, you might wanna try starting a brand, you might wanna freelance as a graphic designer, you might wanna start a website, like that's what your skill sets lend you to. If you have a background in supply chain management, like maybe something like importing would, would be good for you. So, you know, I think one of the most important things are what are you interested in and what are your skill sets geared to more so than I have X amount of money to invest, what should I get into, right? Now here's one other thing I wanted to point out. So this gentleman's making a pretty good buck, right? $75,000 a year is actually really, really good money. I think a lot of us kind of get jaded to the amount of money that we expect to make. I remember I came out of college, like I got a degree, who's gonna hand me my 50 grand a year job? Because when you come out of college, that's just what happens, right? You get a $50,000 a year job and a lot of college graduates are, are working as baristas or working at Target making $10 an hour. So simply having a degree doesn't mean you're gonna make money. And we see all these YouTubers who are like, oh, $100,000 in my first two weeks, you know, six figures in, in my first 60 days, you know, all this nonsense. And I, most of it is false. Um, but uh, I, I think we kind of get jaded to amounts of money and like nobody wants to start a power washing business and make $50,000 a year. Everybody wants to start the business and make, you know, 
$50,000 in their first two weeks. And, and the fact of the matter is it's just not that realistic. So I personally have run landscaping companies, which we did a little bit of power washing. It wasn't really a, a, a big thing that we did in our business, but I know a little bit about power washing. I know something about, about the service industry as well and what you can expect to make. And I also have done and currently do Amazon FBA as well. So this dude's making $75,000 a year. I think if I remember correctly, he was in his like mid to late 20s. Um, and here's kind of an interesting fact. If you are under, I figure if it's 30 or 32 years old, if you are under 30 or 32 years old and you are making $100,000 a year, you are the 1%. You know the people that everybody marches on Wall Street against? In your age bracket, that is you. If, you, if you're under 32 and you're making 100 grand a year, you are in the 1%. Now, one interesting thing about this whole 1% thing is that like, as you start getting older, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to stay in that 1%. So I think from like 32 to, I don't know, 38 or something like that, you would have to bring that income up to three or $400,000. From like 38 to 45, you would have to climb that income to, I don't know, $750,000. From like 40 to 55 or 58 or whatever it is, you would have to be making like seven, $800,000 to stay in that 1%. So obviously like as people get older, more people start making money, more people start moving up in their company, people start getting more like ownership and come, you know, a lot of things happen as we get older and as we get more experience and as our businesses grow. And the older you get, the harder it gets to stay in that 1%. But for this guy being in his, you know, mid to late 20s making $75,000 a year, like he's not the 1%, but he's probably in like the upper like five seven ten percentile uh, of earners his age so to think that you're gonna go start a business and you're automatically gonna make more money well that could happen it's not always the case there's a lot of reasons to start businesses and a lot of it doesn't have to do with money it has to do with freedom and lifestyle and, and working for yourself and being your own boss there are a lot more middle-class entrepreneurs than there are super rich entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, when we think entrepreneurs, people think of Elon Musk or they think of a startup or they think of these YouTubers who, who claim to be making all this money. And in reality, most entrepreneurs are a guy who owns a plumbing company and makes 60 grand a year, a guy who runs a gas station and makes 50 grand a year, a guy who, you know, has an e-commerce shop and, you know, makes himself $100,000 a year. There are a lot more middle-class entrepreneurs than there are super rich entrepreneurs. Now, just to kind of break down in numbers, and you guys know I'm, I'm a huge fan of side hustles as well. I wanted to touch on that. He talked about this is gonna start off as a side hustle, and I think that's fantastic. I think having multiple income streams is not only a smart thing to do, I think it's almost a necessity in this day and age. And one kind of cool thing is your side hustle can fund your retirement. It can be what you take vacations on each year. You know, you can live off your regular income and your side hustle can be money you invest, uh, fun money, wh whatever it may be, but a side hustle is only gonna put you ahead. If for some reason, God forbid, you lose your job or something like that down the road, you have something established going that you can continue to build. Uh, so from that angle, it, it's a, a really smart thing to do as well. Um, but one of the, the cool things about a side hustle is it doesn't have to support you 100%. Um, and I think we're very fortunate to live in this age of the internet and with all these opportunities and things like Shopify and Amazon Merch and Kindle Publishing and Print On Demand and everything else. You know, 25 years ago, um, if you wanted to start a, a commerce business, an e-commerce business, a store, there was no like, when I get home from work at six, I'll set up a Shopify store and give this a try, and if it fails, I'm out $29, and I still have my day job. Like 25 years ago, if you wanted to start uh, a business, you had to like leave your job, you had to go get a brick and mortar store, you had to have money for inventory. Um, it was, you know, very, very few people were in a position to where they, they could try something entrepreneurial, and we're living in a very, very fortunate time where we have a lot of, uh, lot of opportunities available to us. Um, now, in terms of power washing versus Amazon FBA, Amazon FBA is gonna be a lot more passive, a lot more hands-off. It's gonna be something that when you get home from your bank job at six o'clock, you can work on that from six to 10 or six to midnight or whatever else. Power washing, I'll tell you one of the challenges of running a service business um, when you're working a full-time job. So I used to, I've had a couple landscaping businesses. Uh, my most recent one was was in 2015. Me and my buddy had built up a pretty pretty good landscaping business. We actually ran it for one year and sold it at the end of the summer for, for a nice profit. But prior to that, we had a landscaping business. My partner was a GM at a restaurant working like 60 hours a week. 
I was working as a uh, watch merchandiser for Scoggin, the watch company, and also going to school at the time. And uh, one of the challenges that we faced was most people, when you have a service business, they don't want you at their house when they're at your house. Um, you know, most people, like when you're mowing lawns, most people want you there during a weekday when they're at work because when they get home after work, they want to play catch in the backyard with their son. Uh, they want to have family over on the weekend and hang out in the backyard and have a barbecue. They don't want your loud commercial mower going on, on a Saturday morning in their backyard. They, you know, when they're trying to hang out with their family and barbecue, they don't want you in, in their backyard. So, you know, when you're working a full-time job and the only free time you have is evenings and weekends to do service-based businesses, it can really handicap you because a lot of people don't want you around at those times. Now, depending on what you do, it, it can actually be beneficial. Like, I'm actually needing to get some work done in my house right now, and it's more work on the interior, right? Like landscaping, power washing, you can show up when somebody's at work. Um, and you can do it when they're not home. Now, for something like like work inside my house, it's kind of a hassle to, uh, I'm gonna have to take a day off work, off work or I'm gonna have to go into the office late um, to stay home with this guy. I'm gonna have to work from home and be trying to like feel, you know, calls on my under number while this guy's banging on my pipes or whatever. Um, so, you know, that would be kind of an inconvenience for me, but if there were like a handyman or something like that who worked nights and weekends, like that would be a benefit. So I think it depends on, kind of what type of business you're running, but for something like power washing, the fact that you're only able to come on nights and weekends, for some people it is gonna be kind of a negative thing. Um, also, power washing is just gonna be a lot more labor intensive. You're actually having to go out there and do the work, um, and you're gonna to have to kind of be on other people's schedules. Like, you can't stay up till two in the morning power washing somebody's house, it just doesn't work. Whereas with like a, a, a an Amazon FBA business, if you, uh, you know, if you get home from work, you got stuff going on. If you want to start at midnight and work on your FBA business from midnight to two in the morning, that's something that you can do. So an FBA business is going to give you a little bit more uh, flexibility. But I think the great thing about starting both of these things as a side hustle is you can grow them over time. You're not dependent on the income. And if someday you're, you're fortunate enough to where one of these businesses grows large enough that it's close to equal to what your day job is, you couldn't decide to make the jump and leave that job and go do the uh, the power washing full time, or the uh, the Amazon FBA full time. The one last thing I want to touch on, and I don't mean to be negative, uh, I, I like to try to be realistic while while still being positive, but. Um, the majority of, of new businesses fail, right? It's just a reality. The majority of Amazon FBA businesses fail. Um, and I would imagine like most businesses, the majority of power washing businesses fail. I would also say that the majority of Amazon FBA businesses don't make $75,000 a year. And the majority of power washing businesses probably don't make $75,000 a year. So this is getting back to that idea that you become an entrepreneur and all of a sudden you're making all this money and your income jumps. Um, there's a lot more middle-class entrepreneurs than there are rich entrepreneurs. And just to put it in perspective, so when I was doing landscaping, and I realized power washing is a different business than landscaping, but when I was doing landscaping and lawn care, let's say that I have 15 lawns to mow a day, which is pretty good. Um, that's a, a pretty busy schedule, especially being like a, an owner operator and or being the only worker and not having like multiple crews. So let's say you have 15 lawns to mow Monday through Friday, every day of the week. Um, at 30 bucks a pop, which is about average. Now, that's assuming that you're staying pretty busy. A lot of my customers, they would call when they'd be like, you know, my lawn hasn't really grown, I don't need you out here this week. Or a lot of my customers were bi-weekly instead of weekly, so I'm only mowing them every two weeks as opposed to every week. So right off the bat, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you have a packed schedule every day. Now, even if you work 12 months out of the year doing 15 lawns a day, Monday through Friday, I think that comes to like, I don't know, what's it, like $480 a day or something like that, maybe 450. I think it's four hundred fifty dollars a day. So let's say you do this five days a week, th uh, not three hundred sixty-five days a year, but every weekday throughout the entire year. Which in the area that I live in, Chicago, you're lucky if you can work six months. More than likely, you're, you're looking at a three to four month season. So, uh, but we'll, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say you have a pack schedule. If you have a pack schedule every day of the year over the course of a year, you're going to make something like one hundred eight thousand dollars. Now. Obviously, in Chicago, you can't do that 365 days a year. Maybe you do snow plowing in the winter. Maybe you deliver firewood. Maybe you find some other hustle. But but let's assume that you can do this six months out of the year. Well, if we take uh, $108,000 and cut that in half, that's $54,000. Now, um, that's not rich, but again, let, let's have like realistic expectations. Like, if you enjoy landscaping, if you enjoy working out in the sun, 
if you like the idea of being your own boss. It's really not that terrible that you get to work for yourself. You don't have to dress up and go into work every day. You don't have a boss breathing over your shoulder. And you can work for yourself doing something you enjoy and make $54,000 a year. That's not a bad life. It really isn't. And hopefully that business continues to grow. And over time, you get it up to, to something a little bit larger. That would be a fantastic business. But unless you're looking to like scale and open a nursery and have multiple crews going out, you know, you as a one-man operator really aren't going to make very much more than that. Um, and, and, you know, someday I may wind up going back to doing that. When I was doing landscaping a couple years ago, I was also running my e-commerce business on the side, so it was really hectic and really stressful and, and a lot of work. But, like, I, I really enjoyed the work. And you know, I woke up early. Um, I went out. I was out in the sun all day. I got to do physical stuff. I felt good. I was in the best shape of my life. I had the best tan of my life. Um, you know, I, I really kind of enjoyed it. And if I could make you know, a comfortable income doing something like that that I enjoyed, that's pretty good. But this guy coming from making $75,000 a year, um, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad move. Like if he doesn't like his bank job, if he's not happy in his bank job, um, you know, maybe taking a little bit of a downgrade and making 60 a year instead of 75, but being his own boss and doing something he loved, maybe that's worthwhile. But I wouldn't assume that a power washing is going to like double your income from 75000 to $150,000. Um, and with Amazon, you know, Amazon's really tough. There's a lot more people failing in Amazon FBA than there are succeeding. And a lot of the people who are succeeding on Amazon FBA, they're succeeding as a side hustle. They're making some money. That's great. But they may not be making a full-time income. And most people probably aren't making uh, $75,000 plus a year. So um, I, I guess that's just kind of my, my ramble on the window washing versus power washing. Um, you know, what do you think would be more conducive to you? Are you more... Uh, of a computer guy? Do you enjoy the challenge of finding new products? Are you analytical? Do you like researching products? Are you good with math in terms of knowing your cost and knowing the cost of importing and knowing whatever additional costs you know, you're going to have to pay for freight forwarding and customs duties? Like, Are you a numbers guy and do you enjoy that type of thing? Or are you somebody who enjoys working with your hand and being outside and being in a different place every day? Like, I, I think your personality, your, your interest and your strengths are going to kind of steer you towards which one of these businesses um, is right for you. And then lastly, you know, while both of these are great businesses, don't handcuff yourself into thinking that you have to do one of these five things. I have to either drop ship, uh, AliExpress drop ship, uh, do power washing or do when I don't know why I'm doing my fingers all weird here. But you don't have to do one of the five things that everybody's talking about right now. There's all different types of ways out there to... Uh, to make money. So uh, would love your guys' input. If, if one of your friends came to you and said, should I start a power washing business or should I start an Amazon FBA business? Like what would your advice to them be? Which business would you steer them towards? And also for, I know there's a couple of you guys out there who, who run uh, run power washing and window washing businesses. I know Kevin, the window cleaner buddy, if you're watching this, uh, would love for you to chime in. Um, I, I know you kind of have an interesting story with how you started your your window washing business. And those of you guys who like work a full-time job and run an Amazon FBA business or work a full-time job and run some type of a service-based business is like, what challenges do you face? Does it benefit you not really being available during the day? Or, or does that kind of hamstring you? Does that, does that handcuff you? Does that make it more difficult? Drop a comment in the comment section below. Let us know your experience. Later on tonight, I'll be posting another episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays because it is Tuesday. Uh, so tune in for that. Always uh, great ideas and uh, great ideas in terms of some hustles that other people have started. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. I think we're about to hit 77,000 subscribers. Really trying to get there to 100. It's been a grind, but, uh, but help get me there. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.